Thank you. We welcome especially Eagle Creek Presbyterian Church, who's come to visit, and their pastor, Eric Huguet, who is preaching for us today, because Andrew Wall, our pastor, is at his other job. He's at a workshop he and his wife are putting on and helping um, authors write their novels. So it's his other job. Uh, I would like to announce that after the service, the, the Grange Hall, we are setting up to barbecue hamburgers and we've got salads and desserts and drinks and everybody is welcome to come and eat. Please come and join us for, the, for eating and introduce yourself to each other so we know who you are and we get to know each other better. Uh, the, um, what else was I supposed to say, Susie? Uh, give us 10 minutes to get the hamburgers going. Give us 10, <laughs> ten minutes. Hot dogs, impossible burgers, whatever you want, we got it. <laughs> it may be 10 minutes before the burgers, burgers are done. Uh, okay. Uh, announcements. Uh, First of all, you may have noticed when you were coming in that our steeple has this plywood around it. Well, we're in the process of a steeple restoration, and I was hoping that it would be done by now, but the uh, County Planning Commission hasn't approved the plans yet, so we're still waiting on that. So it'll be a while, but it's going to be changed at some point. It's going to get better. Uh, next week, uh, we are having a Taze service, and it's inside the church, for those of you who are interested in coming. Uh, and are there any other announcements that we need to talk about? Anything else going on? We could mention in August we're doing a Blessing of the Animals. What day is the Blessing of the Animals? I think it's the 26th. 26th, we're, uh, August 26th, we're going to do a blessing of the animals, and that will be outside here in the sanctuary. So animals can... Bring your animals. Yeah, bring your animals. Uh, if you don't already have one, you will need one of these Highway Home Gospel Band brochure uh, song about books that hopefully are still available and around. Uh, and also, if your seat gets uncomfortable, there are paddings there for uh, on the end of the um, pew <laughs> for for if, in, in order to make it more comfortable if you need to sit on something. Uh, the offering today, uh, all the cash offering that we collect today, will go to the Highway Home Band. So the offering plates are at the two offering plates are at the ends of the pews, uh, I'll call them pews, uh, and you can put those in there. And uh, let's see, anything else? Okay. A tradition at Springwater is for us to sing Happy Birthday to people who are having birthdays. Does anybody have a birthday this week or next week? Then we're going to sing happy birthday to the church. <laughs> this is a bank that Everett and, and uh, Elma, um, Elba Shibley brought back from this 1905 uh, spring of uh, 1905 Lewis and Clark exposition oh and gave it to the church. And we put our pennies in here for uh, a year for each uh, year old you are. So, Five, fifty, seventy-five, one hundred, one hundred twenty-five, one hundred thirty-five. <laughs> so, Kathleen, can you? We have a song. Kathleen, can you start us on the song? Oh, happy birthday! Oh, happy birthday! God bless you and give you a happy birthday. I'm going to turn it over to Highway Home Band, and uh, they'll introduce themselves. Thank you, Gwen.
Joe, would you all join us in a moment of prayer? Good thing to kick off. The, oh, you had some, didn't you? Never mind. Gwen is coming back up. I forgot to go to page two. Uh, I wanted to lead us in a prayer of thanksgiving for the church. So, um, and it's going to be a litany. I'm going to say something, and then you're going to say, thanks be to God, when I raise my hand. So we'll try this. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. As we gather here today to celebrate the birthday of this congregation, we remember that God began to work in us back in 1889. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our church family saved up and built its own church building, rebuilt it after it burned down a decade later, and this, in the century that followed, we saw a flourishing ministry with children, friendly relationships with the community, a deep love for music, and a deep commitment to biblical scholarship. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As we look to the future, we remember that God has begun a good work in us and means to see it to completion. Thanks be to God. As sisters and brothers in Christ, we gather here at Springwater Presbyterian Church, we reaffirm our commitment, not simply to this organization, but to each other. As we have done, we will continue to care for all who come through our church doors as beloved members of our family. Thanks be to God. As those who are sent into the world to express God's grace, love, and mercy, we promise to continue to let our light shine in our community, that all may love, know the loving embrace of God through our interactions with us individually and as a church family. Thank you. Thank you, God. As the family of Springwater Presbyterian Church, we are grateful for our heritage, thankful for our privileges, and aware of our responsibility. May God continue to lead us forward that one lives that our lives together may be full of laughter, music, learning, and love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Wow, 135 years. That's something. That's amazing. <clears throat> Randy, didn't you and Kit just celebrate your 135th wedding anniversary? <laughs> 137. 137. Uh, or does it just feel like 135? That's the way my body felt this morning. <laughs> All right, we're good. If you all don't have a songbook, raise your hand. Everybody's got one? Good. The songs are in order, and uh, we'll be going through them. Some of them you'll recognize. Some of them you may not. Do your best to sing along. You can kind of hum along if you want. Uh, that's good. So we'll get kind of, the, kind of the little nuts and bolts out of the way. I'd like to introduce the band. On the left here, guitar is Glenn. Hiding behind Glenn back there on the bass is Randy. This is my buddy Ed on the banjo. I'm Rick. Uh, that's Caroline playing guitar, and um, Deb, Deborah on the fiddle here. And uh, but I, I get I guess I have to address the elephant in the room. So one of Deborah's hobbies is um, riding dirt bike, <laughs> and so she wanted me to tell you that uh, all of you who are thinking of riding a dirt bike and you little kids, when you're ripping off across the desert, do not kick a rabbit. <laughs> Rick, we're in church. We oh. don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Oh, 
can hear you singing, but that's all right. You know this one, I'll bet. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be no more. And the morning breaks and turns bright and fair. When the same honors shall gather over on the other shore. And the road is coming down the road. Calvary, but the man in the middle was Jesus. 
Church house, and, and we do this because it's this great little mountain church. We love coming here. <clears throat> Oh, 
Sunday singing and dinner on the ground. Well, many were the souls that were behind. And the brothers and the sisters who got on glory land and slept in peace in the maple grove nearby. Looking back now, that little mountain church house has become my life's cornerstone. It was there in that little mountain church house I first heard the word face my life upon. I first heard over to uh, illustrious Pastor Eric. He's going to come, come up here and lead us in a few things in a wonderful sermon. I hear you guys plan. But <laughs> our crack team of detectives, of the Highway Home Detectives, did a little bit of research about Pastor Eric. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, we found out something. We thought we'd share it with you here. <clears throat> now, in his house, Jill's got this wonderful little beautiful kind of cloisonar metal box that she keeps tucked back in the back of the refrigerator. And she told Eric, under no circumstances, ever, 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 are you to open that box and look in it. You'll be a dead man if you do. So for years, he stared at that box. Every time he opened the refrigerator, it just ate him alive. He wanted to know what was inside that box. Well, he weakened. And one day, <laughs> One day when she wasn't home, he pulled that box out of the refrigerator and he opened it up. Well, inside of it, he found three eggs and $79. So he kind of put it back and thought, this is really weird. And so, uh, you know, time went on and the guilt just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore. And he said, honey, he said, I'm... I've got to confess, I am so sorry I opened the box up. She says, oh my. He said, so tell me, what were the three eggs about? And she said, well, Eric, she said, every time you preach kind of a dud of a sermon, I put an egg in there. And he thought, well, that's not so bad. Three eggs. More eggs then. Yeah, and he said, uh, and he said, yeah, well, I understand the eggs, but what's the $79 for? She said, whenever I get a dozen, I sell them. <laughs> and it's true. When I went to the refrigerator, I did it when Jill wasn't home. That's when I do everything is when Jill's gone. You know, don't get on that ladder. Oh, she's gone. I'm getting up on that ladder. So, yeah. Uh, well, I'm delighted to be here, everybody. What a nice crowd. I'm uh, going to have a couple of scriptures. I'm going to read from Psalms, then I'm going to go into Mark and, and read uh, a little bit, and then, then I'll deliver a message. So I'm going to read from uh, Psalm 85, put verses 8 through 13, and then into Mark. But before I begin, a, a prayer of illumination. Guide us, O God, by your spirit and word, that in your light we may see the light, and in your truth find freedom. And in your will, discover your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will, will yield its increase and righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. The reading from the Psalms. Mark 6, 14 through 29, the death of John the Baptist. Jesus has done a lot of stuff prior to this. He's seen a lot of people. Of course, he uh, was rejected in his hometown in Nazareth, but he keeps going on. And he's going to, after this reading, he goes on to feed the 5,000 and does some more wonderful, marvelous acts. 
the death of John the Baptist. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like the one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself sent men who arrested John, found him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous, holy man and protected him. When he heard, when he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came for Herod on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? And she replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier to the guard with orders to bring John's head. And he went out and beheaded him in the prison, brought the head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. The girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. That's the reading from, from Mark. That's a pretty gory reading, you know, if you yeah. really, really think about it. It's, uh, and, and what's interesting about what I found interesting about this reading was is because prior to this reading in Mark and after this reading, we hear about all these great things that Jesus did and how, how he fed the 5,000 and how he took care of people and healed the sick. And, and why is this reading right in the middle of that? It's a gruesome story. I mean, there's no way around it. It's a gruesome story. But it's there. It's interesting that Herod found John interesting. We like to hear him. We can only we can only surmise what John was telling Herod. We also we know for a fact that he was telling Herod that he, it was no good having his brother's wife, and that you know, John was telling you need to kind of clean up your act. But Herod still was protecting John. Herod was really more concerned about the status quo, what was going on. And he was concerned about his reign. He was concerned about his power and his control over all the people. And he wanted to save that and keep that close. While on the other hand, both Jesus and John are giving their power away. They're spreading it out. They're saying, every one of you has power. I'm empowering all of you to believe and follow and do what's right and do what's good and do what you know is morally right. But Herod says, no, I'm in control. I'm continue to stay in control because I need that power, I want that power. Herod has created this dysfunctional family. All these people that are gathered around, they're dysfunctional. And John and Jesus, create a family and seek out a family of people who are willing to follow them and to follow the path towards God, to do the will of God, to live righteous lives, to care about others more than they care about themselves. I'd hate to be Herod, I'd hate to be Herod, more worried about his own oath and his faith, not his faith, but his power, that he doesn't want to do anything else. That's more important to him than anything. Well, 
Jesus and John bless the children. We know in all the readings that Jesus bless the children. And in this scene today from Mark, the royal family, they manipulate the children. They use the children for their own agenda. Jesus lays his hands on the children. He says, let them come to me. Let them come to me. And Herod brings the head of John on a platter to the young girl. And he puts it in her hands. Not a very kind thing to do. Not a very Christian thing to do. Not a very good way of consolidating your power. Unless you're consolidating your power out of fear and force. And that's exactly what Herod does. Jesus, later on after this reading today, he feeds the multitude. He feeds the 5,000. He takes care of them. He goes beyond himself to take care of them. And what does Herod serve up? There's that head on that platter. Jesus brings life. We know that from the very beginning that Jesus brings life. And Jesus brings healing. Day after day, he, Jesus brings healing. And day after day, the rule of Herod is of oppression, death. Nobody likes that. But he's, I think Herod is scared to death. So he's trying to consolidate his power. He's trying to stay there. And again, as I said earlier, Herod's trying to hoard it all in. This is mine. You can't have any of it. And Jesus says, here, let me share what I have. Willing to share what I have. This is what I'm here for is to share. I think in this reading, sandwiched in between all of the good that we hear about Jesus and all of the good that we hear that he's done, Mark is giving us a reality check in this narrative. John is doing the work that laying the groundwork for Jesus and his disciples. And he's telling the truth, and a lot of people don't want to see it. And a lot of people don't want to hear it. And Jesus is also out there telling us that there are other powers that to be here. And Mark is relating that to us, that there are still powers out there that are oppressive, that create injustice, and they instill fear in the people around them, and they create a society of violence. That's not what we're here for. We're not here to be violent people. We were created to be violent people. We are created to be children of love. Well, ours is a very complex time. There are lots of things going on that happen in our lives and the world around us that we get bombarded with daily. And it is on our shoulders to look and to take an interest in everything that's going on and to use our skills to determine what's right and wrong in the world, how we're going to live our lives, and what we're going to do. And I believe that this telling of this story is an example of the things that were wrong. And there's still oppression and violence in the world today. We need to be smart about how we think about the, what we do and, think, and what we say. We need to be careful in, in our actions as well. People are judging us. People are judging us all the time. And you, why? Because we come to church. And the people, those of us who still have lives outside of the, the church, who work in a secular world, they, they know who we are. And they're watching us. They're trying to say, hey, Pastor Eric, what, you said you go to church, but you're, you're doing this. And that's not right. So we need to be careful about what we say and what we ask for. Now, Herod gave the girl what she asked for. I don't think he was expecting that she was going to ask for the head of John. And I think that he could have been a little more lenient in what he did. Maybe he directed her to something else to ask for. I mean, he offered him half of his land. But she was young. She didn't know what to ask for. And her mother had a grudge against John, and this was a way to take care of it. I think in... Even before this, I think that John would have eventually found a way, or excuse me, Herod would have eventually found a way to take care of John. I think the pressure would have been too much on him not to. 
he would be hearing it from all sorts of people. He'd be hearing that John was a rebel rouser, was undermining his authority and undermining his position in the community. We, people look at us, make sure that we're doing the right thing. Herod was more concerned about his own image, about his place in society, about his power and his rule. And when he had the head of John beheaded, he just showed how shameless he was, and in a way what a coward he was, because he was un unwilling to stand up and do what was right and correct. Nothing matters, nothing matters more to Herod than his own vanity. And we should not let vanity and ego be the thing that controls us. Because it's a slippery slope when you start being so vain and so egotistical that you ignore the others around you and ignore their thoughts and feelings and ignore their wants, needs, and desires. Yeah, John paid the price for telling the truth. And we know that later on Jesus did. And I, we'd also heard in the reading today that Herod had heard about Jesus. So now that John is gone, he's probably figuring out, what am I going to have to do for this Jesus? Because Jesus is continuing the message. We need to be able to broaden our relationships. We need to create an image that's more like John and Jesus, an image that fosters community and fosters relationships. Because that's what John and that's what Jesus are trying to do, foster relationships, build a community, a far different community than we have ever known, but one where everybody is included. No one is left out there. There's a place for everyone. There's a book out there. It was written a few years ago, and it was called The Soul of Politics, but the author was uh, Jim Wallace, and he wrote, Central to the prophetic religious traditions is covenant covenant. We all know what covenant is. The moral requirements of a relationship and a community serve to correct our human tendencies towards individual selfishness and exploitation of our neighbors and our earth. We're all in this together. We can't just solely think about ourselves. We need to be able to reconnect who we are as children of God. We need to be able to mend broken relationships. We need to heal, be healers in everything we do. Everything that we do going now and going forward is about making connections, making strong bonds between everyone, strong bonds that are centered on our relationship with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God, and the church. If we can't do that, then we're, we might have some trouble in our lives. We don't want to alienate anybody, but even on the best times, that's what it can happen. The message from John was about connection and connectivity and finding God and being closer to God. And we can't live our lives solely being concerned about ourselves. I think that we need to be stronger more resilient in everything we do. Is it easy for us to be Christians? No. Well, it's a challenge sometimes. It's a real challenge sometimes. I see some few other heads out there nodding like that. We need to be progressive in how we think and how we deal with people and how we see the future of our own lives and how we see the future of our churches. We can't be violent, we can't be oppressive, we need to be assertive in what we do, and we need to deal with people fairly and squarely. This story, this few short sentences right in the middle of that are very dynamic. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. John has been giving Herod a hard time over his affair with his brother's wife. Wife doesn't like it. His brother's wife, she's mad as a wet hand over this. She's not happy about being called out in public about her 
behavior. That tells me that she knew it was wrong. And Herod, through all of this, all well, he cares about is himself. I'm only concerned about me. I don't really care about anybody else. And the daughter, she's just a pawn in the middle of the game. She's just a young, young woman. A young girl, she's probably not even a woman yet. And in the end, when Herod had a chance to protect and to move the ball forward and to serve not just himself, but his, all the people he ruled, he let that slip away. All he was concerned about was himself. It was himself. Far cry from John. Far cry from the message of Jesus. Far cry from the message of the disciples. Really a far cry from the message of the church, which is about helping, which is about sharing, which is about being kind in all your relationships and all your actions. It's important for us to exercise caution when we ask for something, to understand what our requests are. We need to be clear and concise in everything that we say and everything that we do. We need to make sure that we're fully committed to our relationship with Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, and with the church. And we need to understand that that is a commitment. It doesn't end. It's not like punching a time clock. Not like doing it at 8 o'clock in the morning, clocking in, and at 4.30 at night, punching out, and going on your own way. We're always on. We're always on the center, center of the spotlight. There's no escaping that. But we can, be, we can be brave. We can do better than Herod. I know we certainly can do better than Herod. And we can do better than Philip's wife. We can do better than the young girl, Salome. We can be just. We can be fair. We can always tell the truth. We can give what we have and share what we have with those who have little or less. Yeah, the price for being faithful is pretty doggone high. There's no escaping that. I see some heads going like, yes, I see some people trying to evaluate their own lives and where we are. Will we, can, will we always make a high mark? No. But when we fail, we just need to pick ourselves up and get going again. Jesus heard that John had been killed. John's disciples come in, take care of him, and remove him. They didn't turn and run. They're there. They did the right thing. They wanted to make sure that things were well taken care of. So as you go through your life, your life at church, your life in the world, careful what you say. Really think about it. Be concise. Be clear. Be honest. Be correct. Be sharing. Be caring. Be loving. And be giving. This is what we have. This is how we're called to live. And this is how we're called to be the disciples that Jesus and God want us to be. And in my church, I leave with a one-word prayer. And the one-word prayer for today is honesty. Thank you, Pastor. One of the things that we like to do as a band is uh, give uh, up and coming young folks an opportunity. And uh, we are just blessed and lucky to have with us today the present reigning current 2024 Oregon State old time fiddle champion Pee Wee class fiddler today. Woo!
Yeah. His name is Bradley Doodle, and, and he is Caroline's little brother. <laughs> so uh, we, 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 we decided that we asked Mom and Dad if he would, if he, what the world got my pick here? If he would be uh, available we go. to come play with the band and do a couple songs, mm -hmm. and he hasn't done this with us before. This is his first time playing with the band, and uh, so uh, why don't you give a big hand of applause welcome him today. This next song we're going to do that Annabelle and, and Bradley are going to, or yeah, yeah. Caroline and Bradley are going to, uh, are, are going to do is, is with dovetailing into uh, Pastor Eric's message a little bit, that one of the things that we tend to do as human beings is to judge pretty quickly. It's a, it's a fault that we have, unfortunately, and it's real easy to do, and oftentimes that leads to gossip, and that leads to uh, hurt feelings, and it leads to all kinds of stuff. This song we're going to do is a song about judgment and how we pass judgment on it. Some of you may recognize it, but it's a little story that Caroline's going to lead along with, along with Bradley.
know, he was uh, practicing. You want to kind of hang back and fiddle around with this one a little bit? You're welcome to. It's an old song, really, 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 really old song out of the Appalachians. I, uh, I, can, I think I can smell the hot dogs and hamburgers cooking in here. <laughs> or at least maybe it's my stomach that's making noise or something like that. Uh, we're going to do one more song for you, and Pastor Eric's going to come up and lead us out of here. And uh, this is kind of our band's theme song, and you've heard us do it before if you've been here before. Uh, this was a real popular contemporary Christian song that... Uh, Glenn brought to us and we decided we'd bluegrass it up a little bit and make it sound the way it should. <laughs> so, um, but this is our theme for our band and uh, we, Lord, we, we, fully, we fully admit to the Lord that um, we, got, we got some issues. We all do. We're working on them as best we can and trying our best to keep Jesus in our heart as we go through the day in these troubled times. Um, but boy, do we need God.
It's a beautiful place. It's a great place to worship. I wish we could do this every week. Yeah. <laughs> Got this great music behind us. But today, before we go, I want everyone to understand that life is truly short, sweet and precious, and we have little time to gladden the paths of those who travel this way with us. So turn away from what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Support the weak and help the suffering. And as always, be courageous and let everything you do be done in the name of love. And now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us now and forever. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.